Welcome back to The Rhyme Report. I am your host, Adam Dash, and this is what happened this week in hip-hop. This past week marked one of the biggest weeks in hip-hop history, as Drake, whose camp has more leaks than... Yeah. Finally came at Kendrick Lamar, Future, Metro, The Weeknd, Rick Ross, and... Ja Morant? Drake's response was full of shots aimed at Kendrick Lamar about revenue splits with top dog President Top, but my favorite diss by far is when Drake basically told Metro to shut up and dribble. Drake also had a very big week on Instagram, with one of his posts comparing himself to Uma Thurman's character in Kill Bill, who ironically was also not hiding her kid from the world, but was hiding the world from her kid. And as we all patiently await for Kendrick Lamar to click the red button, Rick Ross decided to throw his hat in the ring, coming at Drake for apparently having a nose job. And after seeing the nose job transformation pics, I think the real nose job was the friends we made along the way. Drake responded to Rick Ross by posting an Instagram story of a conversation with his mom, which was basically the basketball equivalent of Caitlin Clark waving that girl off on South Carolina last year. And for the second time in a one-month span, Future Metro Boomin's album was overshadowed by a diss that they brought into the universe, which is kind of the equivalent of your mom complaining about your existence, and you're like, Mom, I literally did not ask to be here. The album also surprisingly features J. Cole, who seems to be like that kid in high school who's somehow friends with every subgroup of friends, and you're like, how does he have time to have this many friends? And people have been asking me, Adam, is it weird that Cole's switching up sides on Drake? I literally do not care. I just like J. Cole verses. The album also features shots aimed at Drake from ASAP Rocky, who claims to have fucked Drake's baby mama before he did, and ASAP, uh, you, you might want to sit down for this one. Um, something happened a decade ago that you, you should know. And in this day and age where rappers are constantly lying in their raps and creating fake personas, it is so refreshing that a rapper like J. Cole would completely immerse himself into his concept album by deleting a song on an album called Might Delete Later and staging his own fall off in real time. Let's just hope his method acting is more like Christian Bale and less like Jared Leto. And this past weekend marked the second biggest weekend of the year for white people besides for July 4th because it was Coachella. Tyler, the creator, started his headlining set by exploding out of a cabin, which is the image I imagine was playing in Gerard Carmichael's mind when Tyler called him a stupid bitch. Tyler's set was also a huge moment for guys who used to rock flat brim hats, colorful shirts with a cat on it, high shorts, high white socks, and vans, as Tyler brought out Childish Gambino to do a few surprise songs during his set. Childish Gambino also announced on Instagram Live last night that he will be releasing two albums this year, one of which is the soundtrack to a new movie he is creating. Lauren Hill also made a huge surprise guest appearance at Coachella during her son YG Marley's set, and apparently YG told her the set was Saturday just to make sure she showed up on time. Schoolboy Q said in a recent interview that there would never be a Black Hippie album, and honestly, a Black Hippie album without Kendrick Lamar now that he's signed to PG Lang is kind of like rebooting the Scary Movie franchise without Anna Faris. It was also announced this week that Kendrick Lamar will be starring in a musical created by the South Park creators in which Kendrick plays a black slave reenactor who finds out his white girlfriend's ancestors used to own his ancestors and... Cole, you couldn't wait a week for this information? I'm just waiting now for the announcement that Seth MacFarlane and Drake are making a new show where Drake's best friend is a talking owl. Chris Brown and Quavo also got into some beef this weekend, and this might mark the first time in history that a rap battle was won by an ad lib. And in much sadder news, this week we lost hip-hop pioneer Rico Wade, who is one of the founding members of the Dungeon family and one-third of Organized Noise. So rest in peace to him, and thank you for your contributions to rap. And that's what happened this week in hip-hop.